<clears throat> yeah, viewers and subscribers, welcome to the coach's desk. Yeah, it's good to be here another time. And we are here to have a little talk with former reggae boy, Marlon King. Um, we're just awaiting him to, you know, show up so we can get right into the interview. So, as promised, um, it would be at one over. We are just giving the king some time before he logs on. You know what I mean, so I want you to get your questions ready. Log on, get your coffee, your tea, and sit back and relax and enjoy this live stream. All right. <clears throat> So, of course, the, uh, we have, we, well, coaches that would like to thank persons who have been viewing over the years, over the weeks, over the months. You know what I mean? Thank you very much for your support. And uh, we trust that you'll continue to support the movement. So we await the king. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, people, thanks for tuning in. We see two people on so far. You can share the live. We're just awaiting um, the king to log on. We just contacted him and he's ready to go. Just waiting on him to log on. Uh, so yeah, big up yourself. See the people that are coming in. Persons are coming in. Persons are coming in. So we have three people online so far. Giving some time for some more folks to jump on. Yes. Yeah, man, people. So, yes, Richard Samuels, good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. So, Richard is always here. Now, big up yourself, Richard. I've always been supporting the movement, you know. Big up yourself. Yeah, man, you see people coming in, coming in. Well, I don't know what's, what's happening on, on Marlon's end. Just spoke to him. Awaiting him to come on. If not, I'll, I'll, I'll have to call him. Dino Ellis, big up yourself. <laughs> What's happening in that game, uh, Richard? You're leading 1 0. Or 2 0. I see you leading 2 0 now. So Liverpool persons are happy again, you know. Oh, Shane Gray, bless up yourself, man. Yeah, man, big up. Big up. We're just awaiting the king to come in. Um, I just um, got information to him, so giving him some time. He's in England, so possibly need some time to set up. Yeah, Richard, you know, now lead too. So it's a fine about the mojo. That not sound bad. Quarter of an hour to go. And you're comfortable in the lead. Two goals to nil. All right. Ian Campbell, big up yourself. Welcome, welcome. Chevron Givens. 
Chevron Givan say them vex him vex when them see the score line, but I mean even though some of the Liverpool fans who have always been doubted Liverpool, you can't doubt them as a quality team. And if you notice in this league right now, every team is going through a bad patch. The, 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 the bad part about it is that Manchester City, Manchester City, they would have gone through their bad patch already. And it's like, now is the right time they are peaking. So, definitely. Definitely. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man, share up the live, share up the live, people. I'll need some more folks to get on so we can get the king on. Yeah. Yeah, man, we need some more people on so we can get the king out over here to hot up the live. Yeah. So, that win is going to take the defending champions probably to what third yeah so all of the persons are used to worry about the defending champions yes they are smiling again you know what i mean so yeah for persons who did not know also preston norton as as um daniel johnson he actually signed a, a, a an extension to his contract to keep him there until 2023 yeah so definitely definitely um so mohammed salah find the double there for liverpool they are currently comfortable leading west ham united two goals to nil Bless up to face in reality. Big up yourself face in reality. Um, for persons who want some inspiration, some motivation, you can run on over to face in reality. Very good um content there on that YouTube channel. If you need some motivation, if you need a little pep up in your day or before your day you get to your, your, your work, you can log on to facing reality so the thing can help you in becoming a better you you know what i mean very good content over there on facing reality yeah man we see some people rolling in O'Shane grace the marlon king one of the biggest goal in the score one of the biggest goal in the national stadium yeah man that's true O'Shane. <clears throat> Mark Thompson said, so what him I gonna talk about? <laughs> well, just stick around and you'll know. We don't know what we're gonna talk about, but definitely it has to be football. Because he's a footballer, you know what I mean? The Dajay Lavish said, coach, I name the sound family and the lavish name sound family. <laughs> Facing reality is a supporter of Liverpool. And she's saying that please don't comfortable leading in football. Anything can happen. Yeah, um, of course, we can say comfortable leading. I mean, Liverpool go, going ahead with, with, with less than half an hour to go, less than 15 minutes. I mean, it should be smooth sailing for them now if they re relinquish that lead now then many questions will be asked of them you understand so all right so people the king is about to come on now so we're gonna jump right into it people marlon king is in the house yeah man you can hear me Yes, Marlon King. Welcome to the coach's desk. It's good yeah, to man. have What's you here, my friend. I want you to say hi to all, all the, the, the viewers who are online now watching you. Big up, Jamaica. I hope right. everyone's safe. Love. All True right. love around here. 
Yes, man. And, and we are happy that you took up the invitation to be here with us on the coach's desk with mm -hmm. host Coach Minzy. You know what I mean? You know, we, we, we are a channel that we, 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 we talk a lot about the reggae boys and football. And it's a good time now to get you on, on set to talk about some of the current things. But before we get into that, Marlon, we want you to tell the, the, the viewers out there a little bit about Marlon. Um, basically, um, I'm 41 years old, father Jamaican, mother English, um, represented Jamaica, um, and the majority of my family members are from Jamaica, um, right? especially on my father's side. Um, my mother is more Irish based, um, and I was, I was supposed to play for Republic of Ireland, the paperwork didn't work out because my mum, well, she was adopted when she was younger. So oh. trying to find the paperwork, it didn't work out. So my, 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 my next option was Jamaica and it, and it, and it panned out from there. So that's all right. Done. Well done. And, and, and we are happy that you actually uh, came to play for Jamaica. But I want you to take us back down memory lane, Marlon. Uh, what was it like growing up in South London? Um, yeah, Peckham, born and raised. Um, it's the same, man. You grow up in the ghetto. You just, my experiences growing up, it was uh, happy, sad. You know, my mum and dad broke up when I was younger, but I still had a lot of family members around me my auntie, my uncles, and they were all football based. They were all football based. Mm -hmm. So it was a community thing when I was growing up. Um, and South London was it was it was unforgiving, you know. You had to adjust really fast, you know. It's a bit like maybe Tivoli. It's a bit uh, like the the rough parts of Jamaica where you just got to adapt. Okay. And I'm sure if you spoke to people like Ricardo Fuller, Bibi, those mm -hmm. guys, they had to they had to adjust and focus on their their goals and their dreams. And that, you know where I grew up was no different. Definitely. And 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 could, could you give us a little synopsis of how? You got involved in the game, football. Yeah, no. As I said, my father, big, big advocate for me playing football, you know. He used to take me to Sunday league games. He, he actually tried out for Chelsea as a goalkeeper. But during those times, you know, black players coming up weren't really heard of. So he didn't make the grade. Then he played lo uh, lower leagues. And then I had my uncle as well, who, who, my uncle Colin, who... He is a big advocate in, in, in terms of pushing me to play football as a young at a younger age. And it just went from there, really. You know, you, you progress through the stages. You go from the local team uh, to, the, to the districts, to your school team, and then you try and make the professional ranks. Okay, cool. All right. So um, you played for about 12 clubs, um, Marlon, um, throughout your career. Uh, which is by far your most memorable club playing for? Or your best experience? I'd say Watford, because we were at Watford at the time, I say this all the time, we had a team that nobody expected us to do anything. And we went up and we kind of went up through the playoffs and we blitzed the playoffs against uh, Crystal Palace. And then we played Leeds um, in the playoff final and then we got promoted. And the way we, we, we beat Palace at Palace, Crystal Palace, 3-0. And then we went on to Cardiff and, and we blitzed them 3-0 as well. And we were a team that we expected to get relegated. So for that, that season for me was very special. All right. Awesome. Awesome. And so so what what Watford would be one of the, 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 the club that you'd have had a, a lifetime of memory playing with? Mm. Okay. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Okay. Cool. Now, when you were contacted to represent the Reggae Boys, I want you to um, tell us what was that feeling like? It was an honour, man, because at the end of the day, you got to think, I think it was 2003 mm -hmm. and 1998 was only, what, four or five years. So at that time, Jamaica was still a stable name in terms of world football because of representing at the World Cup, what yes. those guys done at the World Cup. So for me, and the majority of my family members are Jamaican. So for me, it was a privilege. And the way I was kind of received um, 
with um, Captain Burrell. He made sure he'd done everything. My pass, my Jamaican passport, um, all the paperwork was done really, really quickly. Um, and he made it known, listen, we want you out here with us. And then obviously I made my debut. And yeah. You know, the rest is history kind of thing, you know? Right. So, 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 so the first time, Marlon, you putting on that Jamaica reggae boy jersey. Explain that feeling. I was a buzz. And you don't get to experience um, what it is to represent, you know, a country that's called you up or where you're from um until you actually stand in the lineup and then the national anthem is played but jamaica was slightly different because when i came it was a it was more of a vibe you go out the pitch and you've got all sorts of artists and i'll tell you a story you you know you you have like reggae artists on the plane and at that time we had air jamaica yes which is is no longer because i believe british airways kind of replaced and at that time Jamaica Airways got taken down, but at that time it was, it was a it was a relaxed environment, and then you had people from coach and economy class coming to the to first class and mingling, and you had your own chef, and the vibes was just off the hook. So it was like it didn't feel like a football experience; it felt more like a, 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 a reunion, a, family reunion. Like a, yeah, it was a family thing. It was a family thing, and it was like, as I said, you had like. Big artists like um, who can I say? Uh, who did we have? We had some guys on the plane at the time. Some big, big artists. Like Movado. Mm -hmm. He wasn't known at the time. He went really, and he came through, and was all vibing, was all eating, and the chef came out and he made some curry goat and rice and peas, and we're just sitting down and just vibing. And you go to the games. You got the speakers everywhere. And it was like a carnival atmosphere. And, and that's what I loved about Jamaica. And then once the national anthem went and everyone was like, boom. And it was just, you know, it's just an experience, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Let us switch lanes a little bit there, Marlon. Because you made mention earlier about um, you had the opportunity to play for Ireland as well. But there are some fans out there that say that many times the English-born players come is because they can't find another option. Um, what do you... How do you address that situation? How I, I is by being totally honest, like I've always said, um, mm -hmm. you've got to you got to realize, and what the fans got to realize is that players will always look for the most suitable situation for them. So if you're playing for, say, a, a European team, whether it's Spain, England, someone that's playing in the more attractive uh, mm -hmm. uh, competitions they're going to get recognized more which means more endorsements higher wages that's how it works i'm being totally real with you right playing for teams like trinidad and jamaica especially with the setup and the economy and the travel distance isn't business-wise the most wise move for a player that that's just how it is mm -hmm. as much as you will and we'll go to ryan sterling like the kid, great guy, but he was born in Jamaica. Rep how many John Barnes mm -hmm. born in Jamaica, representing England? You ask the question why the facilities, even when it comes down, not even just the football, but to athletics as well. Mm -hmm. Linford Christie, uh, uh, Michael Johnson, all of the top top athletes in the world represent everybody, everyone else outside of where they were born. Exactly. Not not because they don't want to, it's because they look at the opportunities that are presented to them. And I'm, I'm glad that you explained that point because many times um, there are a few English-born players that are linked to the reggae boys currently. And they, they, they have been, there have been many persons who are saying that um, these persons should not come. They are not patriotic. They know nothing about Jamaica. But I, I'm happy that you cleared up that, that sort of misconception. Because when you went out on that pitch, I'm sure you gave your all playing for the reggae boys, right? Look at my goal scoring record. So <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll dead that conversation straight away. What, what, what is a, what, and, and I speak to players up to this day. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to Nathan Redman, a Ravel, I've had conversations with trying to convince him, no, just go, give it opportunity. It'll be good for your CV. You yeah, know, your career creeps up. Your, your career creeps up on 
like the end of your career creeps up on you really quickly. Go and get that international experience. And he's right, gone right. and coming. And the, and the Jamaican fans of I'm sure they're enjoying enjoying him. But there's other players that took years, even Joby McEnough, Adrian Mariapa, Wes Morgan, when did they come on board? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Until yes, the competitions yes. got more attractive. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're thinking, okay, England is not an option for us now. Right, right. What's the next best option? Then when people hear, because players talk, just like in any work environment, players talk. What's it like out there? That's the first thing, Kingy, what's it like out there? I'm just saying, listen, the setup's not, like, you're still having discussions with the JFF about players' appearance money. That should not be an issue because the, the JFF should take care of the the, the, um, the kind of financial and the, the, the well-being of the player and the player, all they need to worry about is coming and delivering and being in the best physical uh, position to perform. But you're still having that politics of what money, this, that. I see uh, a, a player, I can't remember who it was, um, talking about discussing what players should get for appearances. Those are not things or distractions that you need when you want to go into big competitions. You need everything taken care of. So all the players have to do is turn up and deliver. But there's so many different hurdles that fans and supporters don't see that go on off the pitch that they don't see that cause confusion to when it comes to delivering on the pitch. Yeah, definitely. And well said there, Marlon. Um, switching the lens again, Marlon, you would have had uh, uh, some run-ins with the, with the Federation and you were sent home after being um, named in the squad to play England. Incidentally, Jamaica lost that game six goals to nil. Um, you were also banned from international football for that same incident. Um, are you a bad boy of football, Marlon? Am I a bad boy? No, I'd say I'm a human being that makes mistakes. But I can, on that, on that current situation, we got called into camp on a Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. And the game wasn't until the following Sunday. We was up right. in Manchester. Mm -hmm. There was no curfew. And there was uh, quite a few players. We went out on a Tuesday and we was told we was back in for 11 p.m. And then we were locked out of our rooms. Coming back to the money situation, mm -hmm. we had a discussion about the monies that we should be paid because we knew that the English Federation had put up a big pot to, to, play, to, to pay the Jamaican Federations to play the friendly. Mm -hmm. We weren't receiving any of that. A conversation about the monies, because we, we all, uh, people don't know this, we refused to play that, that game against England before that whole situation. So the game was on Tuesday, there was no curfew. We went out, uh, came back by 11 p.m. and then uh, the majority of the English players were, were locked out of their rooms. We were asked the question, and this was after the conversation and a debate about what we're going to receive as oh. a bonus. So okay. So it was a, a, like a vendetta. So it was basically like, okay, so we've agreed to pay you this fee mm -hmm. to play against England, but we're going to recoup it by making up a curfew that was never there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we so came up and looked at our rooms, just like, well, what's going on? Now, you've got to realise a lot of the players, when, and I'll, say, I'll, I'll state this without being disrespectful, when players come on, come on international du duty, you've got to realise that an athlete is putting all of his bread on the line to represent his country, okay? Mm -hmm. So his weekly wage comes from his club team. Now, right. you've got your club team saying, we don't want you to fly all the way out to Jamaica. Come yeah. back for a Thursday, train on a Friday. You're jet lagged because they're eight hours behind. We don't really want you to go. So tell your manager in Jamaica that you're injured. We get all of these things that happen. And we go, no, 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 we want to go. You understand? So when we go and we got to pull up, put up with this political nonsense, we're like, what are we doing here? Because our main, you go back, you get injured. No one knows worthy. Good friend of mine. He came out mm -hmm. to play for Jamaica. He was at the, the tail end of his career. He ripped his Achilles, his Achilles playing for Jamaica. 
never got a club after that. So you see the sacrifices players playing for international football. Fans don't see that. It's not about English players or other players don't want to play for their national team. It's what comes with it. And then you've got the, the people, the hierarchy saying, oh no, um, we're only going to pay you this or we're going to put you in cabin class. If you're travelling nine hours and you've trained all week and you've got to play three games a week and you're risking injury, you want to be as comfortable as possible. So all you see, all the, the international teams that you see at the top, they're taken care of. They don't, you don't hear these conversations of players having a conversation with the, 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 the federation. Because everything's like food, everything, flights, they're catered for. Now, why is that different with Jamaica? Why is there so many players that were born in Jamaica or have Jamaican heritage not representing Jamaica? Because I'm telling you now for a fact, if half the players that could qualify playing for Jamaica, right, especially in the English League, European League and American League, Jamaica will be in top 20 in the world, hands down. Right, right. Am I lying? That's, that's true, that's true. So what's the issue? Is it the players saying they don't want to play? Or have they heard stories of uh, bad accommodation, the, uh, the pitches being terrible, um, um, un, um, disorganisation? What, 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 what's the problem? You speak to Jamie Lawrence, you speak to all the players. The players that came wanted to come. We wanted to come. We enjoyed the experience. We love representing Jamaica. We wanted to come. Now, the other players that are playing for England or floating around the Premier League or the American Leagues, why are they not putting themselves forward to play for Jamaica? And that's no disrespect to the JFF, but we've had this conversation many of times. They need to sort it out because there's so much talent floating about. Sorry, I can't hear you. You're, you're right, all... sorry, sorry. Yeah, you, you, you made a very important point there. And, and to me, it, it seems as if this thing has been happening from uh, federation leader to federation leader because that, that, that what you faced was under um, Burrell or Boxing? Burrell, then Boxing. Well, Burrell was coming to the end and then Boxing came in and that's Burrell was... Um, boxing was the one I fell out with in England. Right, They said right. we had a curfew, but everybody was up sort of partying at the hotel when I got back, but my room was locked. So, mm -hmm. but maybe because I was one of the main voices that said, no, the guys need to be looked after, whatever, I was used as a scapegoat. But anyway, it is what it is, and uh, right, we're right, still having right. the same conversation to this day. So Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I can understand. So, so there, there was a leaked voice note or our conversation out. I'm not sure if you had uh, listened to it. Did you? With who? Where, where the negotiation between um, Damien Law and the hierarchy of the JFF. Mm -hmm. So what was was that the same thing that um, used to transpire while you were playing for Jamaica? Because I heard Ricardo Fuller did make mention of some of those stuff. It's the same thing that's going on. And listen. As much as I love Tapper, but he's there because he, he abides to what they want. Okay. That, that's, that, that's all it is. And I'm, I'm saying this because I, I don't have any... I'm not looking for the, 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 the Jamaican national team job. I'm not looking for a job. I'm comfortable. I'm just telling them how it is. They're keeping people in place that abide by what it is that... John Barnes came in and I don't think he lost the game. He was... He was why was he kicked out? Mm -hmm. You ask me. He didn't lose a game. Look at his record. Sure. sure. What, why was he removed? Because he was demanding certain standards that people didn't want to pay for. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So when you start yeah. pressing the button and you start saying, this, you know what, the setup and the, the facilities, like not training in different training gears, like getting the worst. So you've got a, you've got a pot, but not all the pot is going into the necessary needs to make the Jamaican national team, whether it be the female team or the main team, the, the, the male team, successful. That's the stumbling block. The talent yes. is there. Very the much so. Right? so mm -hmm. what, who, who is the problem? You can't keep saying, all right, you can say, oh, Marlon King was a problem, whatever. Okay, I'll, I'll take that on the shoulders. But why are we still having the same conversa conversation 10, 15 years later? 
<laughs> it's quite interesting there, Marlon. Quite interesting. Now, on the heels of that international ban, you 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 returned after President Borrell um came back into office mm -hmm. and he called you back there. You had a little short stint of, of captain in the team. What was it like um for you after that international ban? Loved it. Listen, you, you got to understand, and I, I'm going to say this honestly. I love, I don't, I loved playing for Jamaica. I love coming to Jamaica. I love playing for Jamaica. I think, even with my record being blurry, fans appreciate whether you're a rogue or not. Especially in Jamaica, they they understand it. They understand that whether you're a football player, whether you're a reggae artist, where you look at Vibes Cartel. Mm -hmm. People love him they, they, because he's an he, he just like anyone else. You understand? With talent. That's all he is. So for me, when I played for Jamaica, it was always, I always had a bond with the fans. And as, as I said, you look at my record, there weren't nothing else delivered apart from what I was supposed to do with that score goals. So I can't answer for everybody else. But Definitely. when I put the Jamaican shirt on, I gave it my all. Whether it was coming off the bench or whether it, it doesn't matter. Yes. I was I was there to play a part and I love the fact that I got a chance to represent the majority of my family's country and where my heritage is from. I, I hear the passion there in your voice, Marlon. So nobody can doubt your time playing for the national team. You had another run in when 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 it was stated that you and Chris Humphrey <laughs> um you were accused of breaking a, another curfew. Do you believe that you were fairly treated in that matter? Listen, I'm not, look, at the end of the day, right? I'll say this. How can I how can I put this with being being very respectful. Um, when you are, or when you are seen to be a threat, people want to get rid of you. So when there's other underlying issues happening, which you guys don't get to hear, you're wondering why Jamaica can't qualify for a World Cup. Mm -hmm. Why there's um, Ananda Lowe Jr. coming on with elite conversation. Why are these conversations still being happened? Why are they still happening? Why are these players still getting made the scapegoat? Why are the people at the top being made answerable? Jamaica are in a worse position than it was in 2004. Why? If there's more talent emerging, especially on social media, the social media where you've got you've got Baileys, you've got the the, the um, all these these youngsters, even Redmond, all these guys that qualify to. Why are they not coming forward? Why is it not progressed? Stop focusing on the players and start looking at the hierarchy. The fans need to start questioning the top. Because at the end of the day, if you forget me, I'm retired now. Okay. Look at why the state of Jamaican football, even in the female field, is not progressed with all that talent. Why is everybody still talking about Hussein Bolt? He kind of held that country down for how many years and it what it does it puts it brushes everything under the carpet but realistically the reggae boys are the stable mate of that country whether it be the female the male team all the talent and, and the athletics come right behind it or beside it but when you're not presented with the um the facilities people are going to go to america they're going to go to canada they're going to go to england and represent those countries to get the best opportunity for them and their family. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely correct. And at the end of the day, like you said, as a professional, as a player, you always think about your best interest and your family's interest. So you make decisions accordingly. All right. So, so Marlon, with with those run-ins with the with the federation, um, you came back, you played a few games. Uh, what was the main reason for you hanging up uh, your boots? Just, I, I, I thought at that time, with the new president coming in, we didn't have a relationship. It was a basic thing of, you know, we had a disagreement and I just felt like um, 
traveling I, I don't know i didn't feel appreciated at the time and it was just a decision i made and i felt like okay we're not gonna we're not gonna progress they, they've made their kind of stance on me and for me i was like okay let me continue with my career football so that, that's that's all it was i mean captain burrell man he, he was a legend man I don't, I don't think people really really appreciate it. the guy went out of his way to make and you know we could have conversations um with him and it, okay i'll sort it and it's done my family mm -hmm. would come out there and he'll put them up in a hotel he was just he was a diamond of a person and he understood um what it needed to take what what, what it took to kind of give the the the, the jamaican people the enjoyment and the atmosphere that was needed to to to, to elevate and captivate um jamaica to the next level and it was just unfortunate I, listen i'm not here to talk bad about no one but he was my guy yeah definitely <laughs> may his soul rest in peace he was a good yeah, man, man he was for the for the celebration yeah man so, so marlon what we're gonna do now we're gonna go through some of the the the, the, the fans um comments and questions see how best you we can we can we can go through them all right, so Oshane Gray said, Marlon, you score one of the biggest goals in the National Stadium. Do you remember that goal? Or what is your most memorable goal um, that you scored for the reggae ball? I think um, it's got to be against Trinidad. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think Trinidad, being the local rivals, full house at the office, it was just... Yeah, it was a madness. I would say, apart from my debut goal and the hat trick against Haiti, I would say the goal against Trinidad, man, because there was that that rivalry at the time, and to score that goal the way I did, and to be, and I think I was captain at the time. Yes, was, definitely, you you captain that game because um, Bibi Gardner was out injured, and exactly. you captain. Yeah, yeah, man. So yeah, man, that was one. I, I think that that's one of my most memorable um, goal as well. Now. Someone said, Deba Boss said, Marlon King, a good baller. He bring Watford to the top single-handed. How do you, uh, what do you say about that? Um, no, I played my part. I definitely played my part. Oh, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you answer that yeah. question, I'm going to leave you answering the question. I have to go out for one second. But answer the question. Okay. Marlon King, big baller, he brings Watford. Um, yeah, as I was saying, I, single handedly, I, I, I got to disagree with because at that time, Watford had a big team. We had Ashley Young, we had um, Jay, De, we had Jay Demerit, we had Ben Foster, um, Mariapa. We had so many really, really good players. Um, I know like my contributions stood out, um, because I finished top goal scorer in, in the league, but. The team that we had was was a it was a really really good team. Okay, awesome. All right, another question from John A. What do you think about Andre Blake? Do you think he has the skill set for the Premier League? What team do you currently think would best suit him? Um, with Blake, I've I've, I've been watching his progress. I think uh, I, I I'd think a team like a, a Fulham. A London team, uh, like someone like Fulham, someone like West Ham, where he will mm -hmm. get the opportunity, because it's it's gradual it's gradual steps. You need you're gonna need a manager that that gives young players the opportunity. Yeah. So if you yes. look at Fulham with Scotty Parker, my, a friend of mine, and you look at West Ham, what they're doing, the transition, they're giving players the platform to kind of to elevate. So I say a team, a London team, I think will be would be key because I think. I don't know. Fuller done well and a lot of players done well going up north. But I don't know, Jamaican players seem to kind of settle better in, in, in London because of the climate. Right, right. And the next question, Marlon. The Boom Bang Bang Master said, who's the best local midfield you have played with? Who string those passes to you for you to score those goals? Williams. Andy Williams, That's man. Andy. Andy Williams, genius. 
Are you talking about for Antapa? I, I'd say, like, when I first came in, the, the, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd say um, Theodore um, and, and Williams, they, they, they were the two that, when I came, were actively playing and creating and scoring a lot of goals. And I, I think their ability kind of... And if you if they had social media back then, I think they'll be a lot more bigger players than they are now. Sure, sure. I agree with that. All right. You know, of course, we, would, we, we, we have lost Luton Shelton, our leading goal scorer for the Reggae Boys. Um, you played with him. Uh, is there a best memory or time you had with, with him? Yeah, I'd say Schultz. Uh, Schultz, God rest his soul, man. It was um, uh, it was sad, man. When I got the news, I got it about an hour after he passed and uh, I knew his situation was declining. But to get the news is very, very sad. He, Schultz, was, he was a selfish player on the field, but unselfish off the field. And he was one of the, he was one of the guys that kind of, I clicked with being my strike partner. And I, I could tell you a story. Um, when I came back after my suspension, I think we played Canada and we got a penalty and we was talking and we was like, nah, Kingy, have the ball because I want you to get back mm -hmm. into the fold. And he, and he, gave me, he could have took it and he gave me the penalty and I scored and that kind of gave me back my rhythm in terms mm -hmm. of getting familiar with the setup again because obviously I've been I've been out for two years and whatever from the setup and he was like no you 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 take it and we we always vibed off each other on and off the field man he was for me personally he was a good guy yeah man may soul rest in peace as well no no Marlon um are you involved in any football coaching advisor position or anything of the sort not at the moment. I, 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 we do have charities that we donate to. Um, mm -hmm. UK here, Zambia, where we donate. My kids send clothes and football kits and whatever we can. But in terms of coaching, <laughs> not, not from, not, you know, I've just got to be honest. I, I, I'm one of those guys that I've always had my eye outside of, outside of the game. Okay. So I watch games and follow football when I can. But I don't make it um, a priority of mine to to be football, football, football. So because I, I'm I'm a believer that life is bigger than football, and mm -hmm. it's, after you finish at 30, 35, there's another 30, 35 years to go. So I just try not to put all my eggs in one basket. And obviously, you know, I've got my own construction company, real estate company, and. I'm my own boss, so and I don't have the patience to be a coach. I'll be honest, man. I'm too stubborn. <laughs> okay. And one question from Dino Ellis is that if the J JFF um should offer you an advisor position, would you be interested? Hundred percent. I, I think I am without even without even them having to pull me on board. I mean, if you ask Ravel, if you ask Rav, you know, I was one of the main advocates and in, in, in kind of pushing him to, to, to play. I speak to Nathan Redmond. Wes Morgan was, he came up through Joby McEnough. All the guys that you see playing, they call me and say, Kingy, what's the setup like? And I'm like, listen, you've got to be patient. And But it's a great experience, man. There's nothing like it. So would you not say that's some sort of role outside of me just pulling on a shirt and, and playing playing the game? So yeah, yeah. Even, up to now, even up to now, you know, any player that I can recommend playing, but I would advise if I had a role, I know what's needed in terms of what these guys that are coming from a very, very privileged setup to mm -hmm. go from that it's a culture. It's a, it's, a, it's a culture shock. And in the traveling distance, I know what comes with both sides. So from, yeah, a hundred percent. I love Jamaica. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, my, that's <laughs> It, it is quite regardless of whatever people want to say. That's my country. Yeah, it, it is quite evident in your tone and 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 the, the passion that comes to your voice while you you you're doing this interview. We can see that you love the country. Now, a question from Romain is that: Do you think that the lack of quality coach is a deterrent to more established footballers like yourself um coming to play for the Jamaica national team? No. What I would say is this. 
there is this kind of perception of if you're not local born, then you're not Jamaican. That needs to be eradicated. Mm -hmm. Jamaica needs to accept the ability and quality of whether it's the player of the coach that can enhance the country. Why I say that is because it leads on to bigger things. When 1998 World Cup, the industry of Jamaica went up, not just through football, but through the whole economy. Okay, it's a tourist island, as putting Jamaica on the map. Mm -hmm. There has to be a compromise, meaning, okay, not everybody is born in Jamaica. It's only a small island. It's, what, two, three million people? Not everybody has the talent to be able to display their talent at the highest level. That means you've got to compromise and accept outsiders. So that kind of perception and that mindset of going, no, English, I'm English, but because there was that friction when I first went there. You, you could yeah, ask yeah. Uh, Michael Hyde, you asked Jamie Lawrence. There was a D Dion Burton. There was that divide, and it's not good. Yes. Everybody needs to be welcomed. That's coming to uh, have their own input, their positive input on elevating the country. They should be accepted straight away, whether you're from... Because you look at Mauro Bellatelli, he, he wasn't born in Italy, he was adopted, but he can... You know, um, all of these players that play for countries, especially even France, look at the French team. Where the majority of them, where is their heritage from? It's not, it's from Africa. Exactly. It's not from France. But they're World Cup winners because they know how to embrace outside influence. And Jamaica should do that and also invest especially in sports, because that's what we excel at. And there's no way, apart from the music industry, the sports industry is what... So that is where the government money should go. You look at the Usain Bolts, you look at the, the um, all the other top, top athletes, is where we excel at. So getting off that ignorant view of, oh, no, he's not Jamaica and this local pet, yes, but that local player also wants to go to Europe, to the Premier League and yeah. play. Also wants... So what's the difference? You know? So yes. everybody's got to join and then move the country forward so the whole economy can, you know, excel. All right. We have we have Coach Thomas joining us um, on set, uh, Marlon. But we just want to run down through some more questions. Um, yeah. Do you think more Jamaicans... Playing in Europe will benefit the team more than local players? I think it's a blend. I, I, I really do. I think the, 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 if you get, because you can't get past the European League is the top leagues in the world. That you can't get, you can't get past that. Right. You really can't, you can, you cannot get past that. And then unless you've got, um, freakish ability like Hussein Bolt or Hughes is like, no, I'm not going to run for America. I'm staying in Jamaica because my ability is... There's no, everybody has that opportunity. You need that exposure. You need Right, it. right. You know, if you go to a workplace, say you want to become a construction worker, how much construction, how many people own excavators or uh, bulldozers that live next door to you? They don't. So if you want to be a, in the construction game, you're going to have to take yourself somewhere else to get educated. It's no different from football. All right. Does Nathan Redman want to play for Jamaica? Okay, I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to ask that a long time because you refer to him a it, lot. It, it's, it's a process. It's a, it, it's a process. I speak to Nathan all the time and it's... Right now, he's trying to figure out his club career. I mean, he's mm -hmm. at Southampton and he's in and out of the team and... I think he's growing, you know, he's, he's coming 26, 27. If you look at the majority of English-based players, that's the sort of time that they come on board. And then they look at, OK, World Cup qualifiers coming up. So it's, it's all about timing. Not every player wants to come and play a friendly that's in Cuba. Or you, you understand what I'm saying? So yes. as much as the fans would love all of these players, they're also timing their career. They're looking at it thinking, right, this is a... The time now, England's dead. Jamaica have a good opportunity. I can bring something to the table. So that's what I feel. And if if that's me and the way he's thinking, that's where he's at. All right, good. Now, another question coming in from Romain. Um, we now have a local coach, one that went to the World Cup, scored two goals for the Reggae Boys. 
do you believe that he has the pedigree to coach his national team and take them to a better position in world football? What you got to name the person you're talking about? Theodore Whitmore. Whitmore. He's the national coach now. Right. Okay. <laughs> Tapper has been. How long? How long has Tapper been in the job? Well, he, this is his second stint. He was there. He left, and then he's back. Okay. So, but on average, how long has he been there? Um, roughly Ten years? close to a decade. Close to a decade. Mm -hmm. What's his record? Because that's what everybody gets assessed on. If I'm well, a goal scorer. You're right, you're right, you're right. And he has the best record right now. He has the best record right now. Win win percentage. There you go. But at the same time, for that next level to help Tapa, he needs the support, not just from the players, but from the federation. Now, there's a difference between having a manager that will demand it and a manager that is happy to just have a job. So I don't know what to say to you guys. And I, and, and I, I get along with Tapa. But my okay. realistically view is, do they have somebody in place that's not going to put them under pressure? Mm -hmm. Because any manager that's come and demanded have gone. Okay. All right, good. Now, did Daje Lavis said, going into the World Cup and potentially World Cup qualifiers, do you think Jamaica should prioritise younger players and send them out to Europe? I think that that's a question that that's a that's, that's a good question i think yeah. gold cup gold cup world cup qualifiers are a great platform for these young players because as much as you think you're a good player in your national in your local team or in the jamaican leagues you really test yourself when you come up against worldwide players like when you play against teams like venezuela or mexico you experience something different all the time, not just quality-wise on the pitch, but also the climate. You're going into different climates. You look at Luton Sheraton, God rest his soul, he went to Russia. Sometimes you're going to have to take yourself outside your comfort zone. So all of those players, any opportunity to play outside of where they're so-called tearing it up, they need to go and test themselves at a different level. So if Russia is, or, or, or Poland, or... or, or a different league that's above where they're playing at, go and test yourself. Awesome. Now, Lloyd O'Connor is saying, um, Marlon, um, do you think Mason Holgate should turn out for the reggae boys? And have you given him any advice on that matter? Um, Mason's the same. He's in the same situation as, um, as, as, as Redmond. As Redmond. Um, when you're... Okay, how can I put it? When you are playing at a high level and you're earning high wages, right? It has to be something attractive for these players to be. And it's not, not so much being committed. It's like, okay, what's going to take me apart from me pulling a Jamaican shirt playing for Jamaica? Then they're getting the stories or they're seeing uh, uh, Lowe, Damien Lowe, having these conversations on social media. So now these conversations are not just local conversations. They're worldwide. Once it goes on worldwide, Instagram yeah. and stuff, everybody's hearing that. It and he's like, oh, they still got the same issues that went on yeah. when King or when that person was playing. Oh, I'm not too sure. And how are they going to accept me? Because if everybody's going, oh, no, they should pick more players. And then you've got somebody, I, I don't know the gentleman who came on and said, no, forget all of these English babies. should pick local, which... I agree with, but at the same time, if people picking up on that, they're thinking, well, why do I leave my comfortable nest to go in to the fire? You understand what I'm saying? Those are the, those are the questions. So you only get one or two that will go, no, nah, you know what? I want to do it. I want to test myself. Certain other players are like, I don't need to. What for? And then get injured. And then I come, and my contract runs out. And then I'm injured. And then, you know, I... It, it becomes complicated. Um, Simon, Simon, Simon Preston is, is sending a shout out to you. He's saying a big up and good to That's see you. That's my brother, man. Yeah. Big up. That's my brother, man. That's my brother. All right, Simon. So here what is happening. Welcome um to the show, Simon. We have Coach Thomas on set with us um here. Um big up, um, coach. 
Yeah, man. So, uh, yeah, man, respect Marlon. What question do you have for the coach? Um, for for um uh, Marlon, um, coach. Well, loads of questions, loads of questions. So that thing, <laughs> Marlon is one unreadable character. He, he is a a beast on the pitch, but when when you see Marlon in person or on TV, he, he looks like you know. He's harmless. But Marlon, you would have played with Urge Boys, all right? And yeah. um, there were some amount of issues surrounding your arrival and you being here. And, and um, you, it was obvious at one point that you wanted to play because you showed that, you demonstrated that. And unlike probably some others who would, who would have had in the past who merely just come to play, you came to play with, with a different purpose and, and you showed that. You know, you basically led the way and, and, and led the squad. Do you believe we have enough local talent, raw talent, that can be developed over a period of time to stop the influx of, of um, the flow, uh, probably of large amount of English or overseas based players coming into Jamaica? Do you think locally we can reduce this over time yeah 100 100 percent listen the natural ability is in jamaica the coaching and the nurture and development is in europe so that's where you have the problem you've got the natural raw ability of the jamaicans the pace the strength the talent but if it's not being nurtured in the right way it can sometimes it stays a raw, it stays a raw talent. Then you can have, okay, my brother, my big bro, I speak to him every day, Jamie Lawrence, not the most talented in the world. He made a career for himself in the Premier League from whatever background he came from. So imagine a player from Jamaica having the facility and the coaching and the knowledge from Europe and the best leagues in Europe from a young age, we're not talking about when they start scoring a lot of goals in Jamaican League. I'm talking about from grass roots. That's where it starts from, coach. It starts from five, six years old, training on the best facility and the best facilities and the best the pitches with coaches that have the access to be able to ignore, um, uh, 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 to knowledge themselves with what's going on in, in the world game. Because if you think Jamaica are playing catch-up, the development is playing catch-up because it's a third-world country. It's, it's late. A, a player like a Luton Shelton has to score 100 goals before he gets an opportunity in Russia. Where if you score that amount of goals in England, you know, you, you've already kind of developed the basics and whatever. So it's a kind of a disadvantage in, America for the, in Jamaica for the players, even though they've got the more talent Look at Raheem Sterling. Let's talk about it. Look at Raheem Sterling. Came from Jamaica, went to England at a young age and turned into a world beater. You know, and but, that's a prime example. But Marlon, that's a, that's, a, that's a brilliant point, you know. Also on the eaves of that, with this question that is on screen right now, um, do you believe that the coaches need uh, uh, more exposure in order to do the development that you're talking about? 100%. They, they should be. But that comes from the JFF sending their coaches on tours to other countries and facilitating them getting the worldwide, worldwide experience to come back and say, boom, guys, this is how it works. This is what they're doing over there. You think Gareth Southgate, when I play for him at Middlesbrough, on every like weekend, he'll fly out to Holland and go and train with um, PSV. And Ajax. And this is, he's, he's now the England manager with one of the best records. My other manager, A.D. Bruford, he's, he, he's an under-21 coach, doing amazing things. He went, he flew out to America. He flew. It's the same, it's the same thing. But if you don't get the investment, you're starving the development. So without me putting down the JFF, because I get on with people in the JFF, mm -hmm. they have to put their hands in their pocket. You yes. can't expect a, 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 a one-off like 1998. That, when's that? 90, 90, 90, 1998. When is that going to happen again? 
How long are you guys going to be waiting for? How long are you guys going to be talking about, oh, this player should do this, this? You have to look above what's going on. That's all I'm saying. Awesome. I, I like the passion, Marlon. And, and, and somehow, I, I trust that this, this will reach far and wide and someone will get a hold of it in the, the, the hierarchy that they can really watch this and see the passion that is coming out. And, and try to make a change in terms of the whole development of the, of, of the sport, the whole um, treatment of players and all of that. Because it is something that has, has ampered us from administration to administration. Yeah. And I see that it, 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 it has to stop. All right. Kevin, one, yeah. one from Marlon. One more from Marlon. Uh, Marlon, um, yes, let me imagine that you would have been tracking... The, the, the reggae boys over the last two, three years, all right? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing the, 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 the present strikers that are available to us now? Do you think they are at the place, I don't want to use competent, but do you think they're at the place where they can take the reggae boys forward? Are you seeing enough zest and enthusiasm and also quality in this crop of strikers we have? To move the reggae boys forward, right? Let me be. Let me be totally honest. Right, this is a no filter interview. I'm gonna say this: those guys need experience, and not just for um, in terms of uh, ability wise, but to have names on the team sheet when you're playing against opposition. It helps. That's why Trinidad and Tobago qualified for the World Cup because they had names on that team sheet and it lifts everybody. We're going there, obviously as one nation, but people know us, so they're gaining respect. And a lot of teams will look at the team sheet and go, oh my God, there's Dwight York. Oh my God, there's uh, Kenwin Jones. Oh my God, you understand what I'm saying? They look at the team sheet and they're half beaten before the ball's even kicked so as much as as good as these guys are when you don't have the um the surroundings of that uh, uh the experience of players that played all over the, that helps massively so i'm saying the, the crop of strikers very very talented but they don't have the knack and the exposure to be able to strike fear in say a mexico or, or, or USA. You need that blend. And that's why it's key for these players to go out, tear it up like a, 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 a Bailey. Like when they look at his name, a team sheet, there's an automatic distraction because he's gone, yeah. he's in Germany. So you understand what I'm saying? It's Definitely. a fear. It's like, oh my God, Jamaica or somebody serious to deal with. No disrespect so like, to the local players. Go on. Go on. So it's like it boots the, 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 the... The, the players on the team and it also drives fear in the opponent. 100%. But it, it, even when it comes to the supporters coming, they're like, no, we got this guy, we got this. And it gives opportunities for other players to excel as well because the pressure is not on them. Now, if you've got the whole country on your shoulders and you haven't really got the experience to be dealing with international players that are playing in the Champions League, in the Premier League, the Championship, it's a bit of a dis disadvantage. And especially for us Jamaican people, we're very critical. We don't hold our voice. If a player, you dislike a player, they're going to be known that you don't like them. That's how we are as Jamaicans. You ask Dion Burton, and even though he went to the World Cup, he still feels unappreciated from the Jamaicans. You, you understand what I'm saying? So yes, yes. you need that blend, coach. You need, you need the Leon Baileys to go out and smash it. You need... Uh, uh, all these other players that are playing in the Premier League to come together with the youngsters, pull them in and go. But And then also it motivates the young players to go, I want to go where he is. I'm going to show I'm better than him. I can play in the Premier League. So he's coming, you know, he's, he's bringing a certain swag and confidence and then the player from Jamaica going, this is my way out. He's done it. So let me do it as well. Right, and, and Simon P is, is solidifying your point right now with, with, with what he has up there, that you have 12 goals in 24 games for, for Jamaica, and that's a goal every two games. And what he's saying is that you don't have a current number nine that has that conversion. 
So definitely we need a, a, a potent striker. And um, it has to happen now with these two things coming up. And he further adds that you have been our best finisher in the 21st century. Thank you, Simon, for those um, important... Kevian. <laughs> Kevian. Yes, yes, good. Mar Marlon. Let, let me show one more Marlon. And, yes, I, and I hope Marlon, in answering this, he doesn't really throw anybody under the bus. All right? But you played... You played for Jamaica, right? No. If, if, there, if there was anything you could have gone back and changed whilst playing for Jamaica, that would have made your journey or the time spent with the team different. What would you have changed and why? And how much you, you think it would have benefited the team or the country or yourself? If I, 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 I think... Being honest, coach, if I could go back and change anything, I would have had more players come and play for Jamaica than we had. Because at that time, if you look at the players that were available, the majority of players came towards the tail end of their career. And I didn't feel like the JFF reached out to enough players to say, now come through. And there's so many players that slipped under the radar. So many players. You, you, as I said, you've got to think of how many players have, have slipped under that. has got one or two caps for Jamaica that really could have made that team competitive. And it's a shame that Jamaica still haven't qualified for a World Cup with all the talent that we have out there. And I would like... You've you got to think to yourself, like, even for me, if Jamaica said they wanted a link to any of my old clubs, no problem, it's just a phone call. Like, to be more um, correspondent with the players, like the Wes Morgans, Leicester captain, won the Premiership, just to call him and say, what youngster is coming through that you can tap into? It's just a phone call. Oh, um, you know, uh, Jamie Lawrence, what, 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 my, what, what, whatever players, what, what players can we reach out to? Use that as an advantage. Yeah. If I was, a, but sometimes egos are like, no, we don't need this. No, we're doing our own thing. But it's it's denting the country's progress in terms of taking the male and the female girl to, to the next level. We've got but, to but, use as many links as possible. But Marlon, I think that is a matter of 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 importance that you mentioned because what i'm seeing a lot of those guys that played in your time before um they are actually in other country doing a lot of development in youth teams in academies mm -hmm. and our country is left without the expertise of these former players so it's it, it, it's something critical that could be looked into in getting um former players even like yourself just to do a seminar, forums, and stuff like that. Ensure. Back enough, Adrian Mariapa. I speak to Mariapa, I'll be honest with you, and he's frustrated as hell. I spoke to him maybe two weeks ago, and he's like, Kingy, when I first came, I didn't understand your frustration. He says, now I get it, because obviously he's one of, he's got 50 caps for Jamaica, and he, he wants to, and, he, he, and I'm sure he stated he would love to be a Jamaica national coach. But his voice is going unheard. Maybe because he wasn't born in Jamaica. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But there's that there's that block of Resistance. when somebody with yeah getting to that next level. It's almost and no disrespect to Tapa. It's almost like you've got to be a puppet to get a role. Because mm -hmm. once you try and say the things that are gonna benefit the team for the, the better, you get shut down or you get brushed off. I mean, you had John. John Barnes, yeah. Is there more of an icon than John Barnes? Digger, what a nice guy he is. And I spoke to Digger, I, sorry, Digger, I spoke to John Barnes, and he's like, I, I feel like there was a divide at that time. It was like, they had the coaches that they wanted to bring through that was Jamaican based, and then he was like, oh no, you're just coming back for Jamaica because whatever, X, Y, Z. And it, it shouldn't be like that because you think the. the the, 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 the vast knowledge that this John Barnes we are talking about. Go to li the Liverpool team. He walks in there. He's God. But in Jamaica, we can't accept him. How does that make sense? Don't make any sense to me. So until that divide 
is is opened up and the JFS says, oh, you know, we need to w- welcome on everybody that's been a part, whether it be heritage-wise, playing to, and given their knowledge, we won't excel to the next level. That's point blank period. Uh, yeah, you're making some 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 good points there, Valid. man. Some great points, valid points. Um, you know of the guy Craig Butler, right? Some person mm-hmm. want him to be JFF president or to coach national team. What do you say on that? What well, I, I, I'm going to reverse the question and turn into the interviewer. What do you guys think of that? Because you put me <laughs> under enough pressure, Coach Jermaine, Coach Guest. What what, what 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 are we saying about that? Because you got more <laughs> insight than me. You're more you're more educated on that to answer that question than me. So I'm going to flip the script and say, what do you guys think? Uh, this is a cool well, well tell him to bring his, his resume and then we'll have an interview and we can talk from there. No, 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 no. Listen, coach, don't jump out of it. Answer the question. What do you guys think? <laughs> no, as it relates to coaching, as it relates to coaching, nah. Um involvement in, in, in the federation. Probably, but 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 part of the problem with, with us as Jamaican Marlon is I think we are some of the biggest egos in the world. And without having a lot of experience, we tend to make erratic and irrational decisions. And oftentimes we speak out of terms without having solid knowledge of what is really going on and what is really required. So it's all good to feel emotional and talk and make these big speeches. But can you seriously back those speeches with work and quality work? Not just any, any work. So involvement, yes. Coaching, no. JFF president, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> So, so, so Marlon did that interview. No, 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 you haven't answered. You're not getting out oh, of this. I should you answer. Need to answer. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. The, 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 the flip side of it, the, the, the new host, King It, is actually pressuring the real host. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I mean, Marlon, trust me, I do believe he has a template. You know what I mean? I do believe um, he has a lot to offer football but in terms of personality wise I, I don't know the guy personally but in terms of personality i think he's a tough cookie um he he is he, he, he's, he's straightforward he comes across sometimes a bit arrogant so that would be some that would be probably problematic in the position of a jff president but to be coach i wouldn't say give him the full-time job as as coach thomas said i'd have to see his resume to see what sort of qualification he has and so forth um, in order to give him the, the full post of the national coach because, you know, it has to come with something, not just your experience or you dabbling in, in, in football. But, I mean, I believe that he has a lot to offer um, to Jamaica's football because but, but, okay, he, he finds one, one of the best second. players that we have in the last few years, which is Leon Bailey. So, you um, have to give the guy... Um, kudos for that. Yes, cool. But, but Kevin and, and, and Marlon, Marlon, you again, because it, it, it's a joy to, to really hear you express yourself like this because you're always seen as, as a bully, you know, you know, the bad man, you know. But, but to hear you in this forum or this format, you know, hard, hard, really argues well. And I, I, I'm really elated that you are really delivering like this. No, leaving England. This was Marlon King, scouted by the JFF. Yo, we want you to come on, come on and represent the reggae boys. Um, flew down to Jamaica. First two weeks, our first week in camp. Was it a shocker? What, did, did it shock you? Or were you like, yo, seriously? Is this really a national program? Or, or whoa, I want to be a part of this. What kind of feeling you got when you just came? It shocked me. It shocked me. I was in shock. Uh, it, there's no way else to put about. We used to stay in the house in Kingston, and 
We're like pretty much giving mattresses to sleep on the floor. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the house. Yeah, I know it was, it was, it was, yeah, it was that it was a house and people were turning up left, right, and centre. You know, there was no way to put your belongings or nothing like that. It was it was it was a culture shock, but I think what draw what drew me back was the fans. I, to score on my debut, um, and just to see that the, the office rocking and to feel the national anthem, you, you, you bypass that and you're like, okay, next time I want to go, I want to go again. You, you, you get a craving for it. And it's only the politics that get in the way that kind of push you away and you think, you start analysing, thinking, you know what, my body's in pieces. Like, do I really want to travel nine hours to be having conversations at 11 o'clock at night about per day and money? And, and I understood it. And I was one of the guys, you aren't saying one of the guys, I was, I was one of the, the more vocal ones saying no, because us English-based players, we're on a lot more money than local-based players. So these guys should be getting their, their bonuses. They didn't like that because I was a voice of reason. I was like, no, nah, you know what? Come on. Like, these guys, you can't be, they're not on these Jamaican base players. Oh, it's any of the Jamaican base players. I, I, when, I, I, when I came and bonded with them, there was never a divide with me. It was like, listen, we're all in it together. They didn't really want to speak up because they weren't really in a position to go, oh, we want this, we want that. But the players that had a bit more establishment in terms of worldwide football were the kind of the voices. And I was one of those guys. So I was kind of made the scapegoat to go, no, he's, he's the black sheep. But then we're still having that same problem being vocalised from what I say, his dad was an icon for, the, you know, the low family, you know, and he's expressing the same thing I was expressing. What's the difference? But because I was there, I was using the scapegoat. No, my land is this, is that. That's all. That was all a smoke screen, man. It was, it was all a smoke screen because I'll tell you, half of after the the, the 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 hierarchy were out partying and doing what they want to do. I don't know what curfew they're trying to tell me about in Jamaica, but anyway, <laughs> we, we, we we won't go into that. <laughs> so, so, so my land. Quickly again, do do you feel you are you are targeted because? Because of you being outspoken, you think you you were targeted or treated unfairly? Listen, I'm not I'm not an angel. I'm not I'm not an angel, but I believe that everyone sins. I believe that everybody's got a right to voice their opinion, and I was just made an easy kind of escape go. But I was difficult to get rid of because I had a bond with the fans. I had a bond with that that shirt when I pulled it on. You, you say whatever you want to say about me, but. As I said, someone put it on the screen, one in two games. And that was sometimes coming off the bench. So for me, when I when I played for and represented Jamaica, I knew what it was like mm -hmm. to, to, to put on that, that, that shirt. Forget the politics. Because there's guys out there that can say, oh, yeah, um, you know, I've, I've got no criminal past. I've never been in trouble. But I don't have the bond with the Jamaican people. That's the difference. I'm just as real as it gets. And some people know how to take me. Some people, they don't. It is what it is. Yeah, you're muted. Yes, I, you have been as real as real can be, Marlon. And we really appreciate you stating the, the things. And, and someone said, BM, how can you have big international footballers sleeping on the floor? No, we all see the main problem in the Jamaica football, the JFF. <laughs> No, but you know what? You know, you know what? You know what, guys? I'll be honest. I'm, I'm not gonna. There, there are people in the JFF that are trying to pull in the, the right direction. But when you've got people for the, going in there for their own game, so when they're playing big games against, say, USA, and they're pulling in, you know, these players are not stupid. They figure out, okay, they're getting a pot of money to, 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 to facilitate a friendly. If you're playing someone like England, you can't come and say, oh, there's no money available. You know, the players that have travelled from Jamaica to England, that money or small bit of money they're getting feeds a family of maybe five to ten people. So it's going to be an issue. We're not coming here for free. You're not going to let us put on the shirt, run around, and then you guys kind of just take the, 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 the biggest piece of the pie and do what you want to do just because you're in that position. You're going to get questioned, and especially you're going to get questioned by players that are in a position especially financially, that don't depend on the JFF. That's what they got to understand. They're dealing with them, especially now when you've got social media, 
you can't be producing because all it takes is one player to take a, a, a picture of the pitch just to let everybody... You see, it was difficult that time because we didn't have social media. Yeah, If yeah. I took a picture of the circumstances and what was going on now and put it on social media, the JFF yeah. wouldn't have a foot to stand on. But yeah. that's not being a negative. What they've got to realise, we've got to move with the times. If they wanted to reach out to me and say, yo, um, Martin, what players have you seen that are really talented because you're on the ground? It don't cost anything to have that communication. But sometimes people are so in their feelings. Like, oh, no, we don't. Is it English? Or oh, this and that. That they miss the opportunity to take the, the, the whole national team, male and female, to the next level. Every team. England managers, and they all being English. Capello, <laughs> Italian. Sven, it's from where? Look, come on. How long did it take them to get there? You know, you understand what I'm saying? So you've got to bring on the necessary experience, not so much where somebody comes from. So if it's scouting a player from the UK, Poland, whatever, if he's delivering, you want that. You want the best in your team. And the same goes for the, the JFF. You want the best people that are there to support the calls. And as one, you grow. But like this, it's JFF against the players. It's always been like that. And then mm -hmm. the fans are like, what's going on? Because Wayne yeah. Sterling's gone. Nathan Redmond don't want to play for us. Look, hold on, what, what's going on? But what's happening is the JFF feel like they're bigger than the players and the players feel like they're being unjust by the, the JFF. So there's a, a conflict of interest there. That's me telling you exactly what it is, being on the ground and as a, an ex-international. Right. Now, for persons who are just joining in, Marlon Samuel could have played for Ireland people. But thanks to Captain Borrell, he suited up for the Jamaica national team. Marlon King. Marlon yeah, King. Mar yeah, Marlon King. This same Marlon oh, King. Okay, okay. Yeah. Republic yeah, of Ireland. For Ireland. So, big ups to Marlon. And Gartman Gal said on the screen, I don't mind English-based players coming in and playing for Jamaica, but they have to produce. And one that we have here, Kingy, he has produced for the national team. I will say kudos to him. Big up to Marlon King. Because he has done exceptionally well in his, in his um, I would say, short stint. Because um, mm -hmm. 24 goals in 12, uh, 12 goals in, in, in 24 games, that's a good ratio, man. Yes, coach, any more questions for Marlon? Um, for, for me, it is, it is about Marlon. If you were given the opportunity, no, to say, Marlon, we have World Cup coming up. We have um, World Cup qualifiers coming up. We need your services to work with our strikers or with our attacking force. You know, who would you take up that position? 100%, no, presently. 100%. I have this conversation even with my wife. I, because I think someone of, of, of my knowledge, knowing the goods and the bads, and, and I look at my my pass as a pro instead of a con so when i talk to players they can't tell me you don't know what it's like you don't know what it's like to get in trouble i've seen the highs of the highs and the lows of the lows so i look at where i am in life i'm my own boss you know i'm a successful businessman i've seen both scales so it's not just about um scouting talent it's also managing mindsets yes yeah which we don't get taught a lot of Jamaican players, a lot of players, a lot of athletes, people in life, they don't get taught life skills. I mean, we find ourselves caught up. Absolutely. We have the ability, we have the ability and everything comes so fast. But how to manage that has never been taught to us. So for me, I know that because I've stepped in the fire so many times, whether it be right or wrong. I have a, I have a, a very sketchy past, but a very successful career. And I've still mm -hmm. managed to go on and... and, and and elevate to the next level without dwelling on what went wrong. I'm more focused on what did I do to, to do right. So for me, speaking to the players in terms of, you know, how maybe a Jamaican player will perceive you if you wear a nice watch, how, you know, there's, there's little things that happens in camps that certain people are not privy to. You understand there's a lot more that goes on, like, players yeah. they they differ because they they culturally are different in terms of mindsets oh, look at him he's 
but so there's sometimes that jealousy aspect or there's sometimes that disrespectful aspect that mm-hmm. happens in camp where the team don't gel because there isn't that one common goal. And then if you're all fighting over money and then you've got the English-based players that are not really bothered about the per diem and stuff like that, and then you, it, it, it causes an instant divide in camp. So there's like things like that you don't see within a national team that I know that goes on. So, yeah, but listen... As I said, Jamaica's my place, man. Like you know, when I when I come out there, it's it's, it's love. You, you know, it's it's regardless of whatever you want to say, rogue or whatever. But it's what it is. Minzy, okay. one more, one more hold question. Hold on, coach. Hold on, coach. I just want to piggyback on on, on the on the point that he made in terms of giving his service. Um, a lot of persons also talk about the chemistry. Um, when players come from all over the place, that's why it's best to have a local squad. Um, what was it like? What 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 was it like for you as a player who played your trade overseas and you came to play for the national? Was it hard to adapt to 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 what the coach asks of you and so forth in no. terms of building the chemistry and the gelling of the players? No, I I came in and I, and I hit the ground running because. Growing up rough was part of my DNA. So, me, I wasn't intimidated. A lot of, sometimes a lot of the English-based players get intimidated. You know, even the accent, it can, it can, it can really be overbearing for certain people. But for me, asking the players, I want to be played with. I come here to score goals. And if you want to get along with me, it is what it is. So that was my mindset. Come here to score goals and train. And that's how you gain respect. Bust it up on the field. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's that. And then you just, everyone will gravitate to you. Don't try and make friends before you've 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 kind of executed what you're there to do. And that was my job. I came there to score goals. If you didn't like me, that's your business. Keep it moving. Awesome, and, and awesome. players, players, they they get. But certain players, when they come from a pampered environment where everything is done, and you ain't got to worry about because everybody's kind of on the same playing field when you go back down to the gutter so certain man that have got a jamaican heritage weren't they didn't grow up rough they grew up in big houses their mum and dad were together my mum and dad broke up when i was like five six you know there's seven of us i came from like a, a background of seeing my mum and dad fight all the time so when i when i get put into situations my back's against the wall that's a natural environment for me so me getting on with the players we just yell straight away. But if you ask people like Dion Burton, even you took the help take the, the people to the World Cup, he had a difficulty gaining respect from certain players because they thought he was flashy and whatever. You know, it was that cultural difference that kind of separated them that didn't get the chemistry on the field. And he was a quality player, could score goals. But apart from the World Cup, he, he kind of struggled a little bit. Even with the fans used to get on his back a bit because they felt like he was this flamboyant guy. Dion is a cool guy yeah. just from a different background. True, so he true. has Jamaican heritage, but he was raised with, by, a, 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 by, by a different parents in a different background in Derby, that going into Kingston and like staying in a house with, you know, it's, it's, it's a cultural difference, man. But for me, yeah. I, I had a doubt. I'm like a chameleon, man. I, I adapt to any given situation. That's why I always come out, regardless of wherever I've been. You know, it's yeah, yeah. One of those guys. All right. Go ahead. No, give me one second. One more, please. Go ahead. Um, Marlon, we know the shortcomings as it relates to our administration, and we would have seen the struggles over the many years. No players like yourself. Ricky Fuller, Dion Burton, Jamie Lawrence, Paul Hall, and the list goes on. Andy Williams, Tyrone Marshall, the list goes on. Now, could you guys uh, get together, and I'll probably put this at your feet to probably say, could you, could you lead this charge to say, get a couple of the guys together and say, listen, Jamaica Needle, we, we all play for Jamaica. At the end of the day, it is our country. We represented them, and, and um, they're a part of us. We're a part of them. They need help. We, we are in Europe. We, you guys would have played some of you at the highest level. Some of you, you guys are currently coaching now and doing well. What can you guys do 
as a group to assist us with the program locally, even though you guys would have been uninvited. But how could you guys organize something? Because you're trying to Coach, assist. you know what? I think, I think, I think secretly, um, we are trying to do our best individually. And I think if you ask Jamie, Paul Hall, Fitzroy Simpson, um, any of the players that are, are, are active, behind the scenes, we try and push and encourage players that don't really have any sort of access to play for England because that's that's the goal. Look, even players that play in Europe and play for Spain and like England is an attraction. If you can establish yourself like a Raheem Sterling, right? And that's the dream, but the percentage is very small. So what's the next best option where you can go and really make a same yeah, name for yourself and establish yourself as a legend? Right? Theodore Whitmore didn't have the greatest career. Simon, big up, bro. How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Yeah, man. Simon is on. Simon has joined us. Welcome, Simon. Appreciate it. Whitmore, even Paul Hall, Fitzroy Simpsons, they're all they all participated in history. So those are the conversations we have, or I personally have, with the Reveal Morrisons, the Nathan Redmonds. I speak to Simon all the time. Get Rav, we want Rav. I've been asking behind the scenes. I've been one of the, the, the advocates, along with him, trying to get Rav to, to come out because Rav is in his own world sometimes and, you know, he gets comfortable. That's why his ability or um, doesn't live up to what he should be doing because he's so comfortable. Right, You right. have to have, like, even when he came to Birmingham, he was, I had to put him under my wing and, you know, he's had people like Alex Ferguson saying he's the best thing he's ever seen out of the Manchester United Academy, ability-wise. Pogba, Beckham, Scott. He's saying that about Ravel Williams, um, uh, Morrison. Sorry, Paul. For me, why is he not excelling? It's because he's, he's just playing within himself. So, Simon and I'm sure you guys have been pushing to get him on. I mean, you saw him play. I, well, I don't know Absolutely. what do you guys think of very, a bit very of good Very good. He's I like think a feed or a bit more, isn't really, it? Really, really good. Because he's I have a man who's saying that he's funny enough. And I've been following him in, in the academy as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know about him before he started to play for Jamaica. So, yeah, man, he's very, very, very talented. He's the English capper. He's the English capper. He's one of the, English he yeah. is one of the few central midfielder that I've seen that would have possessed both qualities in terms of offensive and defensive. It, it, there's a balance right there. Yeah, and so the fact you players have that. The fans yes. love him, isn't it? Jamaican fans yeah. love him. Definitely. He can do a step over. Right. He can make a tackle. Yes. He can make a pass. Yeah. And he makes the game look simple. And that's what Jamaicans love. That's why they love... That is why Tapa is in the job as long as he is... Let's let's keep it a buck because yeah. he went to the World Cup. He's a legend for Jamaica, and his ability graced and he gave the Jamaican fans something to be excited about. Okay, because if he was just a normal player, I'm sure the Jamaican fans would have got tired of him and he would have gone. But he's yeah, earned definitely. that respect. Now, what I'm saying to you, on top of that, Tapper needs help. He doesn't have the international exposure in terms of coaching. So he needs someone alongside him, not just the local base, but he needs that international quality to make him be a better manager, which will filter down to the team as well. Right, right. Awesome. So Simon, I don't think you come on here to be quiet and just listen to conversation. <laughs> so you have to throw in a, throw a few jabs at, at, at Kingy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Kingy and I chat chat all the while, but you know what he has said so far, especially about Ravel. Everything he has, has said is spot on. We've been having these conversations from 2013 when Captain Burrell says he's going to get Roy Simpson to start the paperwork, and look where we are, almost eight years later, and yeah. Ravel only has two caps for Jamaica. So I think once we've identified a player, go for him. Don't just sit and and be lackadaisical or be you know just be lazy about it. I right? go after the player, and we shouldn't be waiting long. Because you never know with football players, they can be in good form today and tomorrow morning a different player. So get them when they're hot. So that's the best time to have them on the field. All right. This question, this question just pop up. Um, Robin is unjoppable. We have no other midfielder <laughs> like him in, in our player pool. But with, with him not having a club, do you subscribe to that? 
Who's that for? Is that for me or because yeah, I, 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 yeah, I mean, look, it always helps have a club, but at the same time, I feel like any football is is important. Some players play better for their national team than they do for their club team. There's players mm -hmm. that they're at a club team, training with a club, but they're not getting in the team. And then they go right. on and then they'll score a goal for Wales or whatever. I mean, Gareth Bell, he's not playing for Tottenham, is he? Yeah. But then he will go and play and he will, he's the main man for, for Wales. So why would you starve the national team based on as long as he's keeping himself fit and he's getting some sort of activity, whether right. it be a uh, 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 reserve or under 23s, bring him across because he's going to want to prove a point. You need hungry players. You don't want a player that, okay, he's in form for his team. And then when he comes to the national team, he kind of not like tosses it off. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. You need those players. Yeah. All right, I'm not, let me go and bust it up for my national team so I can get a club. Do you understand? So that there's that kind of reverse kind of mentality of, okay, I'm given an opportunity by my national team. I'm going to be sit I've just scored. Club's going to re-ring my agent. Oh, so you're still playing. So that means you're fit, X, Y, Z. So it can work in a, in a different aspect. All right, yeah. a, a, question, a question jumping out from facing the reality. What plans does um, Marlon think could be implemented to the youth program to assist the, 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 the youth program in moving forward and chiming out some more talented players? Uh, listen, I, 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 and I speak to Simon all the time, guys. Um, and we have private conversations. This ain't, this ain't to do stuff to, to, to get followers or to get any sort of props. This is just because right. I want to see Jamaica mm -hmm. at the World Cup. I want to see the country progress. Definitely. And we ask me for numbers and we chop it up all the time. But as I said, it starts with no matter what I want to do, no matter what Simon wants to do, what you want to do, coach, whatever you want to do, uh, um, desk, it, it doesn't matter it's the hierarchy that I have to accept that they're going to have to take information from different aspects. And, and, and that's what it is. And that's where the lack of communication is. So as much as the fans, you guys have got the right idea about what the team needs mm -hmm. and people that really care, even ex-players, if that doesn't facilitate through to the people that are actually making a decision, it all kind of yeah. falls on deaf ears, man. Yeah, no, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. It's not gonna happen. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, that hundred percent. Because the like King has spoken about like already already on the show about the the coaches, what is needed from that aspect, and also the playing facilities as well locally. So you can imagine if if that could be implemented where the facilities are better. You know what Mount Pleasant is doing already, coaches desk already, and their program yeah. with the, the youth teams. Can we have five more Mount Pleasant academies on the island? That would yeah, be our yeah. There Five more than we'll go on another, uh, Let me ask you a question because you guys will know more than me, right? When Tapper and his team are not um, having an international game, are they flying to different countries to, 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 to do coaching sessions? I don't know. Are they, are they been given access to go to a Holland or Germany and being able to work alongside um, different... Because, you know, it's easy... Tapper would have... Kappa would have had those kind of experiences in the past. I, I know that for sure. In the past, he would have been going out in the past. I, think I you know, know that for Kappa. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, in well, recent well. times, it has not happened. Yeah. In recent times, it has not happened. Okay, but who? Okay, who is the who is the international the, the, um, scout for, especially young players that come from the Jamaican background and Jamaican heritage? Who is the main guy that goes and scouts these players? Simon. Is it Simon Preston? Or is it Simon? Simon is one of them. <laughs> yeah, but I think Simon wears that hat. Simon is one of them. <laughs> okay, but is Simon is Simon a you si, are you official? Like in terms of No, not official, just recommendation right, right. of the name. So, the why is yeah. Simon given you see now Simon's doing it out of the love for Jamaica? And I, asked I asked him that question too. Why is he official? Why is he not? Part of the establishment. Yeah, very Winston, very Winston very Clark is the official man for the position at this point in time. I've never spoken to Winston about any players whatsoever, and there's there's maybe probably fifteen to twenty players 
in my phone book that I could probably convince to play for Jamaica. Wow. And, I, and the only guy I've spoken to is Simon. And yeah. one of those guys you see playing, and the other guys like Wes Morgan, the Joby mm. McInnes, Adrian Mariappas, Lloyd Doylers, are come through us too. Yeah. So people are getting paid to do jobs that are not... So I don't know. I'm just being real. I'm not trying to fall out with anybody. And this is why sometimes people that have a voice get pushed to the, 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 the back. And they want yeah, people I, with strings in their back. You'll never put no string in my hand. And, and, and King, eh? I must say, Simon has been doing a, a, a tremendous job. I've been following his, his commentary on YouTube for, for a while now. And, and he has been doing an excellent job. We have spoken from time to time. And I just love the work that Simon is doing. The passion that is there for this, this, this reggae boy is not coming. Why isn't this guy, is this guy in the room having the conversation? I would like to know that. That, that is what I'm doing. And the relationship he's got with the players. The relationship, I'll be honest with you, the relationship exactly. he's, got, he's got with the players, none of those guys have. So who's making the decisions? And that is where I think we need to move away from. I think it, it, as, as long as we continue to have passion, we are going to be operating below standards. I think we need to get seriously professional and then the passion will come along with that. So, so we need a full backroom staff in place to drive our football forward. And until we look at other countries that are successful in soccer, in football, and pattern what they have, and then add our mix to it. We, we, I think our one of my greatest this greatest disappointment is, is that I don't think we are producing. We have you, you alluded to this earlier, Marlon. We have loads of raw talent, loads of raw talent. But if you ask me, are we are we developing? Are we producing enough finished products? Then I'll say no. I, and I think that is where the, the huge gap, we, we have a huge gap when it comes on to producing solid teams over the years. From youth, from under 17 to 20s to up to even, even younger than that. Even coach, even younger than that. Starts from yeah. grassroots. And this is what I'm saying. Right. But you, you, you have to travel and network to make the connections to be able to grow an establishment. Every country in the world has have a, had a different man. Look, it's every manager in the Premier League English. It's an English league. So when people tell me about, oh, Jamaican born, and it, it goes over my head. I just think that's nonsense. That's because nonsense. every look at look at the German team. Thank you. Look at the French team. French team. Yeah. You look at the Italian even team. We've got black even players. The US, even the US team. The US exactly. team. Yeah. So, right. So, so, yeah, so in the Dutch team. That, that, that kind of, and you know what it is, I know what it is. People use that as an ex a scapegoat to go, no, we're Jamaican, we're proud, and yeah, we get that. But then you're only going to stay in Jamaica. That's facts. Until you go, <laughs> no, we want to accept uh, education, and you want to accept investment, and you want to accept, accept uh, uh, advice from other people that have travelled and different you ain't gonna go nowhere. That's this guy's traveled. You watch him, he's been Manchester, he's in London, Spain, everywhere. His knowledge of and an understanding of what needs to happen and with that goes along with the passion and loving the country is what you need. Not just I'm Jamaican, I'm in a position, and nobody can't tell me not. He <laughs> goes past that. So whatever you guys want is going to be different from what those guys are going to allow because they're comfortable to dictate and say, no, we're Jamaican born. I heard some, I don't know who it was that says, no, we want, we don't really want overseas players. That's some ignorant point of view. I don't know if he's ever kicked a football before. I don't know who said it, but that was so ignorant. I just locked off the conversation. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you see, yeah. and then I see Damien and Lowe the other day Still talking about per diems and appearance fees. That should that, yeah. that's some dinosaur prehistoric conversation. <laughs> Guess what? Marlon King's the problem. We'll still have the yeah. same same discussions. You know what I mean? So 
we get what you guys want, but whether it's been allowed at the higher level is a different thing. And that's probably why I'm not phoned by Winston or I'm not called because I'll give my honest opinion and say, you guys have got to spend yeah. some money. You've got to invest. You've got to get the, 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 the female uh, uh, um, training facilities better. You've got to get the stadium up. You've got to start getting the fans buzzing again. Get a decent spot. Who's the sponsorship for the... Who sponsors the team? <laughs> they don't have a sponsorship right now. Yeah, but this everyone. is what I'm saying. What, what's the rankings? What, what, where's your, this is what I'm saying. These are all yeah. part of the process of making yeah. the, the federation's job easier. When you've got outside funding to take care of all of those things, you can just now focus on your job. But when you're like, oh no, let me pick up a kit here. Oh, you bring. I'll tell you a story. This is a, this is a story for you guys. When we played, we played Nigeria. Jamaica didn't have a training kit. I called mm. uh, Watford. And my kit yeah. man arranged for the reserve kit to come to Millwall's training ground so us, we could have the... We didn't have no balls, no bibs, no training kit. And I got my kit man to bring everything down to Millwall's training ground when we was playing Nigeria. How about that? Yeah. But they don't tell you those things. No, Marlon King's the problem. Yeah. But I was, I was pushing for these guys to get paid. And so we don't... Why are we having discussions at 11, 12 o'clock at night about money? So when you say that... They'll know he went out, he's a bad egg, he's this and that. Damien Lowe, mm -hmm. Jamaican based, same conversation he's having that I had. You know, it's, who's the problem? <laughs> Certainly and I hope not this the is. I hope, I hope this yeah. interview is. I, I don't, there's no fault with me, Simon, you know. Like, there's nothing, I'm not trying to, there's no uh, uh, um, foundation behind me in terms of, or establishment to say, can't say this or you can't say mm -hmm. that a lot of players want to speak but they can't because they have yeah, yeah. their clubs because, because when i hear because yeah. when i hear ricardo fuller in an interview stating that it has been two decades he has left the national team and players are still having fights with the jff about um appearance fee and those are the money that he used to get um two decades ago so it, we used to get more. We used to get yeah. more than that. We used to get yeah. more. We used to get more than what Damien Lowe is discussing. So when I heard it, I was like, "Wow, is that what these guys are offering you in this day and age?" But you see, the JFF now have to be careful in terms of what conversations they're having because the platform now is greater. Players have a voice. People like yourself, Coach Simon Preston, have a voice. It's not just reaching the Jamaican Gleaner. You mm -hmm. guys now on Instagram. So what you say is picked up worldwide. Yes. And they have to understand that ignorant mentality of saying, no, we are the, we're the ones that are... They're not in... It's the players. It's the players and the supporters that are the most important because without them, without the supporters coming to the games and the players turning up, there is no JFF. Exactly. Point back there period. Is no I'd love to see. I'd love to see Simon as, as the JFF president. The day yeah. And I, I think if you guys rally for him, I think he will get it. I'll be honest with you. Hey, I with the wealth of knowledge that Simon has and the contacts that he has been making over over the years, trust me. But but Simon is shying away from it, Kingy. No, no. He's shying away from it, Simon. <laughs> I have just a few more experience, years of experience, and I think I'll be ready. Still a few more things to work on. The, the okay, analytical yeah, aspect. He's starting to look, starting starting to look like a JFF yeah. president, the hair and everything. And, and this is <laughs> Simon and <laughs> King and, and Coach. This is just so good because I've been lobbying for something like this because I think past players, I think, this is my opinion now, have not been vocal enough. So, so you would have just heard. Ricardo full of coming out over 20 years and talking publicly. Yeah. And 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 how many other past players would have spoken out publicly? And and I think if, if this was done years ago, like like we had a player by the name of um, was it Rice Campbell? Jamal, Jamal Rice Campbell. Campbell. Jamal Campbell. That's right. He appeared and he disappeared. And he is nowhere to be found. And several others came. And because, because I'm not sure if it's 
Right, it's up here and disappear. And nobody heard Jason, anything. Jason what happened? Jason what transpired? Jason, Jason, you. Jason yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. Right. Disappear and disappear. He came, he came for one game and he was like, One game. I, I, can't, I can't do this. Came to Kingston. So many other. Yeah, there's loads, there's loads coach, mm -hmm. right? And what I'm saying to you, this is not. Uh, 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 we're not bashing the JFF. This is constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. Okay, so until they allow our opinions within their circle, they, 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 it's not going to go anywhere. Until they allow people that are seeing things from different aspects, whether it be player, whether it be journalism, whether it be like you, Simon, campaigning and doing your bits, giving advice, they cannot. They can't. The, the situation will get worse. But but when I look at it though in a, in a gentleman, I think it's a it's a it's a inherent pro, inherent problem in the Caribbean um, sporting governing bodies. We, we we lack leadership. We lack persons with the ability to bring the, the, the various generations forward. So mm -hmm. I, I'm wondering if if when persons are put in these positions, they 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 go in for the clout or they go in it for the love of it. Mm. Kevin, I think until, until as leaders we, we, we allow ourselves to listen to other people's opinion and validate your opinion. In Jamaica, coaching especially, once a youngster question, question you about any instruction given, that youngster will be deemed as disrespecting you. Yeah. And, and our society is it, 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 different. And our, our kids are from even though Jamaica is very, very small, but you have different aspects and different parts of Jamaica. And mm -hmm. they are exposed and socialized differently. So you'll find a kid from uptown, mm -hmm. as Marlon alluded earlier, and when he was talking mm -hmm. about Burton, he, his experience will be different. He, he's going to communicate different. So you might say yeah. to him, for example, run 100 laps. And he'll say, okay, coach, fine. But you tell a boy to, to run 100 laps from in one of the garrison areas, yo, coach, yo. How do we manage both? Yeah. How do we get both of them to sing of the same in sheet? And until we have personnel in different in these important positions that are able to do this, we are going to continue to have issues. I right, check this, check this side, check this coach, check this um, desk, right? Mm -hmm. Diet, it's an issue. There's a divide in diet. UK, mm -hmm. cereal, different Jamaica, rice and peas, chicken, it's very heavy. For the players that have been on a certain diet, right. hygiene is different. Yeah. UK players in naked, certain players, Jamaican, they don't want to get changed. In yeah. there's so many cultural differences that you don't see. You understand what I'm saying? So we'll come there with our habits, and the Jamaicans will, uh, Jamaican-based players will come with their habits, and they clash. Certain guys yeah. after training are not showering. So um, you, you you understand what I'm saying? It's it, there's there's yeah, more to right. it. So yeah, you need a coach or you need a federation that's going to implement a worldwide structure, not just a Jamaican structure. Yeah. That's because the problem. Is, you need worldwide structure. This is what they do worldwide. This is the diet: skin chicken, baked beans. When you've got someone saying, yeah. "No, I can't eat that," I can't eat that, and then you've got the friend mm -hmm. turning up at the mm -hmm. gate. With rice and peas and jerk chicken, that player's just put on how many kilos and yeah. feels heavy playing the game. So he can't play to his. So then he's looking at a player that's come from the UK that seems demanding, but realistically, that's why he's at that level in his life because he's structured a certain way. But then you get no, bring bring some some snapper, bring some, and it's like you can't have that much cooking or before a game. Like, go to your bed. There shouldn't be people outside, waiting outside and, and your car, music playing. So there's all those kind of disputes before we've even got to a game, come game day. Yeah. You guys don't see that. I, I, I can tell you so many stories yeah, yeah. where the cultural divide is so huge. And then if you've got a manager that kind of only kind of speaks to the Jamaican players and leaves the English players to do what they want, the Jamaican players think, oh, the English players are sport. Or, you, or you, you understand what I'm saying? There's so many different kind of um, negative narratives that happen 
outside of the most important thing, which is the match and getting the performance done, that people don't see. Now, if you've got somebody like Simon or myself or the Jamie Lawrences that understand both cultures that get it, but then can give an overall view of this is the simple structure we're gonna we're gonna. This is the time we're getting up. Nobody's allowed to come. No visitors after the game. This is the diet we're gonna have. Everybody from the coaches right down to the players and everyone. Everybody's got to be on the same page. But when you've got too many captains and only one ship, that's the problem. Yeah, that's the so reality. And you're yeah. right, you know, because I can share an experience as well when when Maps and Nosworthy and Makanov was involved and, and other lads, they would want to be in bed and by, by 10 o'clock latest while the island-based players would be by the gate with their family up until midnight, 1 a.m. and there's a match in 12 hours' time. So it just oh, shows the different sense. mentality and, and, and aspects of different players and how they react. They take their, their, their recovery quite seriously, especially the professionals. <laughs> Go ahead, yeah. go ahead, man. No, but yeah, but coach, as you you alluded to, um, desk as well, the person that's in place has had the experiences of both. But I believe, and this is my opinion, as much as I get along with Tapa, is that he plays the role to the JFF. Hence why he's in the position so long. I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. So instead of saying, no, we need, you need a manager that's going to demand. As soon as you get a manager that demands, he's gone. Because John Barnes was like, no, we need to do this, we need to do that. And it was like, oh, now we're going to slip our own people in and we're going to get rid of you. Now we're talking about an icon. Yeah? Like, I don't know if people understand, his record was very, very good. And what he'd done was he implemented the basics. And I don't think he lost the game. Simon, correct, because you're the, the football kind of uh, You're right. guy. So he didn't lose a game. Right, yeah. He didn't did lose he a game. Why did you, you guys ask me why did he leave? We're talking about John Barnes, born in Jamaica. Okay, he played for England, so did Raheem Sterling, but he came back to manage the country and he yeah. his methods were very simple. We're gonna stick to the basics and we're gonna play to people's strength. So P mm -hmm. players like uh, uh this person or that person, you King, you stick up front, you do this, you do yeah. and he he didn't lose a game. What where where's he gone? But here we go now. We go back to somebody that they can dictate. That is the bottom line, guys. The matter how much people dislike what, what? this interview, what I'm saying is the truth. No, King, I, I, I hear you. I hear you not cutting you. Sorry about that. Yeah. But, yeah, but of recent times, in all fairness to Tapa, he has been firing some shots. Yeah, and, no. And, uh, yeah, but coach, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disrespecting Tapa. I'm, I'm saying mm. that with Tapa, his relationship so close with the JFF. Yeah, I understand. They can sometimes take advantage of what yeah, you yeah, understand. Yeah. He's firing shots, but he's been in the job a long time. He's played in the mm -hmm. UK. We need to see development on the pitch. Jamaica needs to be turning up for, 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 for the World Cup now. Enough for all of this now. So what I'm saying, his relationship's so close with the JFF and he's been firing shots recently, but players are not, especially the ones that can represent Jamaica, are not attracted to Jamaica. Why? Actually, why? Why, why, why not? What, what's, what's missing here? Nobody oh. can answer me. What's what's yeah, missing? Yeah. And look at the talent. Yeah. Look, I can name 50 players oh. playing in the Premier League down to Division One that qualify playing for Jamaica. Yeah, that now it's so 50. So, huh? 50. Yeah. Easy. And easy. 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 And that's just Premier League. They probably can get up to 100. Of course. <laughs> easy. Easy. Yeah. easy. Wow. Easy. Easy. You go to you go to the academies, you go to academies like West Ham, you go to academies like um, 
all, all these other teams, right? These London teams that have yeah. got yeah. these players that qualify playing for Jamaica. Yeah. That are going under the radar. Who is there on the ground getting to that guy's ear saying, you know what? Look at this. Look at our facilities. Selling them the dream. That's what's missing. You understand what I'm saying? They're not going to... They're not going to Jamaica. Like, the yeah. pictures and the diet, the stories that's going around and the negative narrative that's going around about the Jamaican national team is not a healthy one, which is a stumbling block. So, yes, Tapa is pushing the right buttons, but he needs to say, I need a development manager. I need a top scout. Who I need a budget for somebody like a Simon Preston to fly out and get in the yeah. and then we need funding for just some turf. It, what, a bit of game fence and turf with some lining to take some picture. You get a photographer to sell the dream. How difficult is that to do, to sell a player? Getting a it's sponsorship. This is Jamaica. Guys, we've got Usain Bolt. We've got all the, to sell that package to someone like Puma and or Nike. Birmingham have got Nike. You see lower league teams with the sponsorships from these top sporting companies. Yeah. Why can't Jamaica, on a worldwide level, that's renowned as a holiday destination, get sponsorship? You tell me. Very, very the valid points they're making, Simon. Trust me. I, I, I just want this... Sorry, Marlon. I just want this, this, this information to reach out because... These, play, these persons who are in the Iraq, I'm not bashing them. They have some good guys in there. But, I mean, for the most part, I don't see where, where they are doing enough to at least get a sponsor for the national team. You have a Leon Bailey. You can mark it up like that. He plays in On Germany. his own. On, On his, his own. own. He, yeah. On his own. He, I think, is he sponsored by, is it Nike? Or added I think it's Nike. Yeah, I think it's Nike. 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 He only has to campaign Jamaica to say exactly put him up on some. He is on that level where he's attracting interest from the likes of Man United, Liverpool, all these Real Madrid, Barcelona's. Exactly. They should be looking to sponsor wherever he goes. So they when he goes to play for Jamaica, they don't want him in Adidas if he's with Nike. They want him in Nike. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna sponsor mm -hmm. everything around him. But what's the problem? But, but on the note of Leon Bailey, um, I heard today that his club bought Gray from Leicester City. Demari Gray. So, Demari Gray. right. I'm wondering another if, if Leon probably. Yeah. He's oh, out Birmingham out City. City. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm yeah. wondering if Leon might be on his way out. Oh, listen. Tomorrow the window closes. Well, look, there's been a, a, a lot of talk about Sancho, but Sancho and Bailey are similar players. So maybe Man United mm -hmm. are thinking that he's a better option, cheaper option, less complicated, easier to get the deal done. You know, this oh. is football's a business. Let, let, let's yeah. not get it twisted. At the end of the day, I mean, Sancho's forms dipped. Everybody wanted him, but now they're looking, but they're probably looking at the next best thing. And, and, and Bailey's definitely on the list, 100%. He's smashing it, man. He, you know, yeah. and have him already representing Jamaica. That is that is uh, an empowerment of in itself. You know? Okay, yeah. let me ask you a question. Where can you guys buy a Jamaican national top? That that's a question I asked some time ago too. And and, and if you go online to purchase it, what benefit mm -hmm. is national program getting from purchasing a logo so we need merchandise for the for the, for the national team why aren't these persons marketing the thing putting them out at leon bailey with number seven sell that so that so that it, every can... barber shop in the uk has a jamaican in it we don't know where to go and buy a jamaican top the only time people get jamaican merchandise is from my old training gear or where where where, where this is what I'm saying. It's these small little elements that make such a big difference, you know? And it's like, why can we not go into even a, a, a local barbershop, a local school shop, and buy a Jamaican top? Because they'll be sold out. People love Jamaica, man. They, I don't yeah. think the Jamaican understand how and powerful the Jamaica thing, is as an island. And the next thing is that in, in, the, in the era of social media, there's not enough been doing to promote the thing, to, to highlight that the, the games that were played, 
um, the top players in 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 the in the country. Nothing. You go on the social media, you see things not updated and all of that. It it it's just it just coach it just it requires a budget. Yeah, not it even a condolence. Exactly, Simon. The loot yeah, and shells and pass, and you don't even see anything. Nothing on any social media. Read the JFF what they are putting out for for footballer. For it's just sad, man. Right. So, as much as you guys were going to have this conversation for two, three hours, yeah, it's that's why I, I, I choose to kind of just like give and, and my input when I can. But having as 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 um as Wiley Booth as he, he touched on as Ricardo Fuller touched on the twenty year old conversations, man, mm-hmm. and that's got into an era of exposure. Jamaica as an island is is probably the strongest in terms of marketing a uh, uh, worldwide renowned people just for Bob Marley, Hussein Bolt, for heritage. That alone is a catalyst to be able to push the sports uh, economy, in, whether it be basketball, football, female, male, netball, because I know the netball team, Jamaica netball team, and 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 that it's it, it's it's a very strong setup, but they don't have the backing, so they're not going to get to the levels that are, are deserved. Yeah, yeah, I know that we um, I, th- this show was slated for like two hours, and we have gone over it by close to ten minutes. Um, definitely, we appreciate um, Marlon passing through the coach's desk. Big up, big up, Sheldon. Big up, Sheldon. Big up, big up, Sheldon. Yeah, yeah Sheldon is saying big up to, 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 to Marlon. Big up, yeah. Big up, yeah. Yeah, man. Thanks for, um, to Simon for, for stopping by. Thanks to um, Coach Thomas for stopping by. It was indeed a pleasure. You, 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 you spoke on a lot of issues, um, Marlon, that we spoke on before, but you gave us from 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 a direction where someone was actually there before, you know what I mean, and 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 it's pretty interesting going forward. I am already ready to vote for um, Simon to be president. He, he said he has a few more things to do, but and I mean, he's got a lot of backing. He's got Sai. You got a lot of backing. There's a lot of guys that respect him. Exactly. To, to to all the all of the players, all all, all all maps and where's the all the guys respect you, man. And I think. And they you and they 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 they're itching to to play a bigger role, especially Maps. I know Maps is really really passionate about yeah. his part in in playing for you. You ask anybody. That's Mario, right? Yeah, yeah, Mario. He yeah. he is. I'd love to I'd love to see him as Jamaican future after Tapper's steps. I'd love to see Maps as as as, as one of the, the 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 managers or part of the setup. And and yourself, Simon. I think. You're doing a fantastic job. Every time on my Instagram, I always see the flag being represented. Represented, you know, and it's uh, you need more people like that that, that care about the the, the the country instead of their pockets, you know. Appreciate it for sure. I agree. Yeah, man, really and truly, we appreciate this um effort um from you, Marlon, to come on. I Anytime. know it's late. It, it's it's late evening. It's a Sunday after, um, evening, and I'm sure, I'm sure no, um, it was, would have been a family time. And you spent over two hours nice. with us. Oh, this guy, yeah. he, he, he will call me. He will start a live at four o'clock in the morning over here, and I'll jump on. And so I'm used to the <laughs> random phone calls. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I was just being, you know, I was just being nice. <laughs> yeah, it's alright. It's okay. No worries, man. Anytime, yeah, man. So guys. thanks again. Um, all the persons who are on, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, thank you for your comments. Thank you for the questions you 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 you, you threw at, at Marlon. Um, thank you for being a good audience as well. Um, just big up everybody for for stopping by here today on the show. Um, thanks again, um, my friends. Big up on yourself, and I trust that big you up have guys, man. Stay one. safe as well. Stay covid and, free, big up, man. Definitely, and you'll be safe over there in 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 UK because we know what is that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. before we go, I want, I want to um each of you to share your final thoughts before we go. Starting with um Simon. 
Well, as it relates to the, the national setup and what needs to happen moving forward, I think organization is key. If you put the pieces together, the puzzle will come together. And that, whether that's player recruitment, whether that is practice facilities, whether that's recovery for the players, travel and accommodation. If all of those five things can come together, then we can really, really give Qatar a, a realistic opportunity for qualification. Yeah, man, that well said, yeah, well said. Coach, coach, coach probably it just sounds like a president. It just yeah, sounds like a president. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Coach is probably doing yeah. something else. So I'm going to give King the chance to share his final thoughts with the audience. Yeah. I first, I, I'd like to send my condolences out to Luton Shorten's family, man. And uh, rest in peace, Luton. And just say life is too short, man. Like, as I said, especially with Jamaica, it's such a, a, a powerful, a powerful, a really powerful island. Um, and I think sometimes we take that for advantage. And just imagine us being in Qatar, man. With now, with the current social platform that we have, Jamaica, it, it will be bigger than 1998. Not in terms of the achievement, but the exposure for the economy. 100%. It will, it will, it will blow the roof off if, if that target was met. But without the, 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 the togetherness and the financial backing, it's going to be a struggle. So I would say if the JFF are listening um, to any of our points of view, Get behind the country because it's a it's a knock on effect. It's a domino effect. The the, the national team do well. The the whole country does well. It's it, you saw it from 1998. Now this is on a different exposed platform. Jamaica at the World Cup with everybody having access to see exactly what players, who, who's who, where the island is, everything at the access of their palm, which 1998, it was just like bright colours and people were like embracing the vibe. Now it's a whole different thing. Jamaica will change forever if they manage to, to get to Qatar. Trust me. Um, well, said, well, well said, well said, well said. Every single word that you say a while ago is, is, is well said. Um, cool. any final, any final words? Yeah, man, quickly, guys, because I have a lot of emergencies. I'm jumping out. Uh, Marlon, it was a pleasure talking to you. Um, Simon, again, you know, big pleasure. You know, really appreciate this. This, this really sounded like it was coming from somewhere. You, you, you could hear that Marlon spoke from, from deep within. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, what I'm hearing now, Marlon is, 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 is based on what I'm hearing, you, you can you, you you could probably go back and and, and revisit revisit some of his mm -hmm. games, and you, you can compare and you 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 hear the same sentiments. I can compare them to his performance. So you, mm -hmm. you are seeing that kind of passion. I would just love, really love, if if a couple of you could, could really sit the JFF down, Marlon, in the future, near near future, and and have a Zoom meeting with, with with them. You know, we are willing to come on board. We want to be a part of what is going on. We can help you in this way. We can do this. We can do that. Meet us halfway. Let us have dialogue. You know, so I'm thinking you, you guys can do something like that. We'll all be happy. All right? Coach, um, Coach yeah, we're open, man. Open, man. We're, we're, we're here. He's got my... Simon's got my number. You got my number. You guys asked me for my number. I didn't withhold it. I sent it to you. Right, right, so, right, right, right. You have right. access we, to we me will be time, you know? Yeah, anytime. Yeah. We will be talking. We will be talking because... I'll be talking with, with, with um, Kevin here as well. Um, you'll be hearing some stuff from me very, very soon because I'm all about development. I'm all about learning as a coach. So we'll be talking. But again, it was a pleasure. And Marlon, Kevin, I think we should try and get with Marlon as soon as possible. Yeah, man. Yeah. Marlon for JFF Marlon president. Voting press time? No, Simon. No, Simon. <laughs> Simon, Simon. Simon, 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 Simon I president. I don't want that pressure. Simon, international scout. Yeah. All right. All right, guys, talking to you guys. Yeah, man, definitely. All right, and take care. I'll see you guys again. Yeah, man, Marlon, you'll hear from me soon, all right? Yeah, catch up, guys. Love, man. Yeah, yeah man, no problem. All right, so I'm going to end. Thanks, yeah. my friends. All right, yeah.